Hi everyone, it's Arshil Ahi. It's um, Sunday evening. Sorry, it's not Sunday evening. Apologies. It's Tuesday evening. I normally run these on a on a Sunday, so apologies about that. Not a great start. Right, let's get moving on. So tonight we're going to be talking about how to find motivated sellers in a booming market. Just so that you can, I can know. Can you let me know that you can hear me nice and loud and clearly? That'd be phenomenal. Just give me a quick yes, no. And also whilst you're there, it would be great if you wouldn't mind, just let me know who you are, where you're from, and what your current experience is with property, please. That'd be much appreciated. So let's get moving on. So first of all, I want to say thank you very much for your time this evening. I appreciate that. Time is one of the commodities that is most precious. And the fact that you're spending it here with me this evening would be much appreciated and I'm going to give you as much value as I can. Just so I can quickly check before we go any further, can you hear me? Give me a quick yes or a no uh, and then we can move forward, please. Brilliant, okay. Right, so what are we going to be covering by the end of this webinar? It's very straightforward. There's no frills to this webinar. I try and keep it straight to the point I like to pack a punch and I like to get to uh, make sure that everyone fully understands it from A to Z so that we know. I don't know why these keep popping up, by the way. Um, so we know exactly what we're looking at and more importantly, how you can implement this going as from today, stroke tomorrow. So who is our Shilahi? Let's start because I'm the founder. And this is probably one of my most proudest, uh, proudest moments is that. I'm the founder of the Property Investor app. Now, the Property Investor app is what I would consider the UK's first property investment marketplace mobile application. So um, if you want to call it in its simplest form, I call it the equivalent of right move, but for property deals. So I set this up. Uh, it's been live now three years and we've got over 40, nearly 42,000 users on it. That's 42,000 investors on the platform uh, and we sell deals to this platform every day and we're going to be talking about that as well. It's worth saying that uh, first and foremost I am a property investor. I've been inv investing in properties for over 20 years. I've got a significant portfolio um, which is very healthy in its cash flow uh, which has got the best part of 1100 tenants. And on average, we source on average around 500 deals a year, which is equivalent to like 10 a week. I don't know any other deal source from the UK that's doing that kind of level of volume. As well as that, I write in certain uh, property publications around the UK. So I write in the um, YPN magazine, I write in HMO magazine, and I'm an Amazon bestseller of a book called Boom Bust and Back Again. And as the title suggests, that property's not always been easy for me. I've seen some really good times in the boom. I've seen some really bad times in the bust. And I'm back again to tell the tale. So you can find that book on Amazon. Feel free to have a read. It's not a property book, so to speak. But what it is, it's almost like a mini journey, a story of my journey throughout the 20 years that I've been involved in property. And you'll hear about all the mistakes that I made, more mistakes than the good times. I'd rather you tell you about the mistakes. Where's that? I'm a property trainer. I've helped hundreds of people achieve financial freedom. And in lockdown, one, you know, the first version of lockdown, I released a podcast called The Property Rebel. We release new episodes every Tuesday at 6 a.m. So um, if you like free content, go and check out the podcast. Please feel free to leave me a review. As well as that, I release lots of new content out on YouTube as well. So feel free to go and check me out on YouTube. If I'm sounding a bit croaky, uh, please allow me to apologise. Um, as I said in some of the marketing running up to this webinar, is that I'm still suffering from quite a long COVID. Um, I'm coming out the back end of it now but it's still just the niggly parts that you can probably hear in my voice. And we're getting there, but it's just a little bit annoying, shall we say. So what are your goals from 22? So you set yourself some goals at the start of the year, 2022. 
uh, perhaps you'll now start in looking into 2023. So what are those goals looking like for you? Are you trying to build cash flow into your income? Are you trying to build assets into your portfolio? Are you trying to secure your family's future? Are you looking to escape the rat race, your current job? Are you looking to make property pay for luxuries, such as holidays? Are you trying to get your kids onto the property ladder? Or are you trying to create a pension plan? Now, just so that you know, there's nothing wrong with any of these because it all comes down to you and your personal circumstances. But what it is good is for you to have a plan. So write down what is that goal? And then more importantly, write down lots of mini goals and action steps as to what's going to get you there. And we can talk about that because that's really important. We can all talk about what we're going to do, but if we don't know how to get there, that goal may seem a million miles away. So we just spoke about visualizing success. So what does success look like to you? Is it owning a certain amount of properties? Is it having the properties to generate a certain amount of cash flow? Or is it sourcing a certain amount of deals? And again, I said, what are you going to do to get there? Because I'm a big believer that the journey is more important than the destination. You've got to really enjoy the journey. You've got to really understand the journey because you take, it takes the journey is the longest part. And unless you're going to enjoy it, you're not really going to be able to. Some people will deviate and they'll fall away from the journey and they'll fall off the journey. They'll go off and do other things. But ultimately, you need to stay on track and you'll, you will reach that destination. Now, definitions of success. Everyone's got their own definition of success. And for me, it's about living life on my own terms, where I have the flexibility to work when I want, from where I want, and with who I want. And for me, that is the most important thing because the last thing that I want to do is have to feel like I'm tied to a specific job or to a specific role or have to work with a specific person. For me, that would not be an attractive role. And as a result, that definitely would not motivate me to keep going to hit my final destination. Now, I'll put this out there today. This is a slide that I put out there and I, and I saw the quote and I thought that this is quite apt because now is the time that you kind of have to make a decision. If you don't build your own dream, someone will hire you to build theirs. Now, this webinar is not to put down anyone or to you know say this is good and this is bad. That's not what I'm about. But more importantly, if you're currently employed by someone, you're actually building their dream. They had a dream and you're in their team to build their dream. Isn't it time now, if you've got your own dream, that you start to pursue that? And I'm going to show you that the steps that you can do this. Sorry, if I do go quiet for a second, I'm probably just having a little cough. So moving on, does anyone know on the webinar, what is deal trading? Does anyone know what deal sourcing is? Does anyone know what deal packaging is? If you do, can you let me know what your experience is? Have you got already, have you already tried deal sourcing? Are you interested in deal sourcing? Have you thought about it? but not progress it any further, write it in the comments box. And then I'll be able to see where you are in your journey. And I'll be able to tailor this presentation according. And I'm hoping that you'll get real value out of it. So for me, deal trading, deal sourcing, and deal packaging are pretty much all the same things. They're just different terminologies that lots of different trainers used it use all the time to try and glamorize it. Now, I'm not going to glamorize what we do this evening because deal trading very much is a case of, I call us glorified estate agents. 
because let's face it, deal trading is not a new strategy. It never has been, it never will be. And one thing that I can say is that deal packaging, deal sourcing, deal trading is a successful strategy and it's been tested over multiple decades. So it's definitely not one to be ignored. And it's where I call it almost like a matchmaking service between people that are selling their property and people that want to buy property. So the person selling the property will be the owner, the vendor, the person buying the property. It won't be Mr. And Mrs. Blogs that is looking to try and move into it, to live into it, to live in it. It will be a property investor that's potentially looking to buy it, to convert it or to rent it out or to use for investment purposes. Now, as a deal sorter, a deal packager or deal trader, whatever you want to call yourself, you're the person in the middle. And we're going to show you this in a second. Um, you're the one that's going to put the whole process together and create a win-win for everyone. Now, I'm going to give you a quick just overview of what my plans are for this year. So my plan for this year, I want to source over a thousand properties. And one of the reasons why I'm running this webinar is because I need your help. I want to create the largest network of property sources in the UK. And I want the Property Investor app to become the equivalent of, for Rightmove for property investment opportunities. And I want to become the largest well-known deal trader in the UK. And I can do that with your help. So what is deal trading? I call it like there's three principles or three pillars of deal trading. You've got the vendor. The vendor is the person selling the property. Uh, and generally speaking, these guys may have tried an estate agent like Connell's, Reed's Reigns, Your Move, whoever it may be, and they've not been able to sell their property. Now, as a deal sourcer, you're better at understanding investment properties um, other than estate agents, and you're good at matchmaking the right property to the right investor. And the investor is the third pillar where they come and purchase a property which meets their criteria and pays a fee for their service. So in essence, we're like an estate agent because if you think about it, the vendor has got a property that they want to sell. You've got buyers on your books and you're introducing the two parties together. The only difference between a deal sourcer and an estate, and an estate agent is that whereas the estate agent would normally charge the seller for selling their house, a deal sourcer generally charges the buyer for buying the house and they don't charge the seller. So therefore, that gives you as a deal sourcer a competitive edge over an estate agent. So just imagine now that you, the deal sourcer, goes to meet a vendor, and at the same time, the estate agent goes to meet the vendor. Now, when you both present your opportunities to the seller, the estate agent is going to be saying, well, I can sell your property, but I'm going to charge you between 1% and 2% plus VAT. Now, you're going to say, well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Seller or Mrs. Seller, I'm not going to charge you a penny because we make our commission from the buyer. So anything that we charge you, we sell your property for will be 100% yours. And that's what makes deal sourcing really effective to um, vendors. Now, three of the things that you need to look at as part of the principles of deal trading. As the deal sourcer, you need to be able to identify from the vendor where is the pain and the motivation. From the sourcer's point of view, then, once you've got the property, you need to then be able to identify what makes this property such a good investment property? How can you add value to this property? Where is the investment angle? Because if you can answer that question in the middle, your investor who is looking at this property will then be asking themselves, 
why would they buy this property? But if you've already answered the question as to how you can add value, the investor should, in theory, be saying, okay, I understand that I can buy it for X. I understand that we've got to perhaps spend some money on it to increase the value, and it's now going to be worth Y. And as a result, this is how deal sources really have to justify their fee. Now, I don't mind saying that the reason why I became a deal sourcer is because I get to see the best deals first. And I'm going to just show you a couple of the properties that I've acquired myself over, over the last year or couple of years. And these are ones where I direct to vendor deals. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I got involved in deal sourcing is because I got sick of dealing with estate agents and then getting into a bidding war or the agents not calling me back. And so I decided that if I was going to start marketing and doing direct to vendor marketing, I'd put myself in front of the vendor and I'd have the ability to negotiate and also to get the best deal according to me. Now, some of these examples I'm going to give you are quite out there. <coughs> But I can say that 100% of them have all been completed and I'm happy to provide any documentation required to show that all these transactions happened. So this is a property in Wolverhampton and I agreed to deal with the vendor where they would get 300,000 which I thought at the time was close to market value for this property. Now, I negotiated an option with this vendor and I engaged a planning consultant, which cost me on average around £500, who went off and said, well, I think we can do this, this, this and this with the property. And we went and got a indicative planning permission to extend the property. The planning permission was granted, was now valued at 435. And we spent 500 pounds on that. All the fees were to come in and off the back end. <clears throat> now, it was worth now with its new permission at 435. I agreed a deal at 415. So, in this scenario, I collected the 415, I paid the vendor their 300, I paid all the other bits and pieces, like the architect's fees and all the other fees out of it, and I walked away with £103,000 from this deal. Now, I'm going to say that these do not come along very often, once every few years. But when they do come, you've got to make sure you grab the ball by the horns and take full advantage. Here's a few more properties on Merrydale Lane, Wolverhampton. Originally, I offered, I was offered these by an estate agent of £400,000. I refused to buy them at £400,000. I said, sorry, far too much money. I put an offer in at, um, I think at the time it's around 200 to 210,000 pounds. They rejected it naturally. They thought it's too big a drop. I couldn't justify their 400,000 pounds. It was way off the market, uh, market value. I thought realistically they were worth around 300 at that point. And that's for both properties, by the way, both of them that you see in the picture, not just one. Anyway, 12 months later, they hadn't sold them. They came back to me and said, would you like to increase your offer? Would you like to look at the properties again? And we eventually, uh, after a week of negotiating, we, turned, uh, we had our offer accepted at 235,000. I then went and converted both properties into a 16 bed HMO. And that generates over 77,000 pounds per annum with an approximate cash flow of 4,000 pounds a month. 
I managed to refinance the deal, get all the money out of the property, and it gave me an infinity return on investment. Third property, property on Technal Road. Um, and here's a property that I initially uh, was offered by an estate agent at £180,000. Now, sometimes if you see real value in the property, there's no point in negotiating any further. Just offer them, give them what they want. Have you ever done that? Feel free to say yes or no. Um, and what I did, I said, I'm going to offer you £180,000 on the proviso that I can go off and get planning permission. I knew that this property um, I knew I could convert this property into multi multiple numbers of flats. So I got my architect to do some drawings and we got planning permission for six one bedroom flats whilst we were going through the, the purchase process. After we did the works, we now got that property valued at over 600,000 pounds. And it now generates over 40,000 pounds income, which gives me a cash flow of around best part £2,000 a month, refinanced all my money out on this property and an infinite return on investment. Now, why am I showing you these three properties? Because today we're talking about deal sourcing. But what I'm trying to hit home is that deal sourcing isn't just about finding a deal and then selling it on to an investor. It's about finding deals that you potentially want. Um, and off the back of that, being able to um, decide, is it for me or is it not for me? And then as a result, decide, am I going to buy it for myself? Or if not, am I going to package it and sell it onto someone else? So do you kind of understand that? Now, if you were, if you were me in these scenarios, would you have kept these or would you have, um, what would you have done? Would you have kept them or would you have sold them? <coughs> Excuse me, just type in there. So would you, which one of these did you like? Did you like the first one? Did you like the second one? Feel free to feel free to comment. So, okay. So, where's it? So Ben says, "Where's the comment box?" You've actually just commented in the comment box, Ben. So well done. That's quite funny. Okay. So let's keep moving on. Right. One of the other reasons I love deal trading is because there's no tenants. There's no maintenance calls. There's no bank borrowings. There's, it's 100% hands-free investing. You're not tying up any money. And you get to deal with any property in any town, any city or any country. And it could be start and stopped when you require. And I've been doing this wherever I am around the world. So even when I'm on holiday, I can still do this and still source property in the UK. Now, this is going to surprise you, but you don't physically need to actually have to visit any of the properties. Um, Sorry, can you, sorry, I'm just having a bit of a coughing fit. If you just bear with me a second, please. Sorry about that. <clears throat> it's really bad this evening. I thought, I thought it had cleared up, but obviously it's still quite tough. Right, okay, so 
why I really love deal trading is because you can do this from anywhere around the world and you don't have to visit the property. And I'm going to be showing you about a system that I've not had to visit a property. So I can show you some of the properties that we've sourced this week and I've not left my office in Wolverhampton to go and view them. So more importantly, we're not having to deal with deal, uh, we're not having to deal with solicitors. We're not having to deal with surveyors. We're not having to do with any refurbishment works, no builders or contracts, and there's no risk. So, and the reason why I say there's no risk, because you don't own anything, there's nothing that could go wrong. And let's think about this from a point of view, is that when an estate agent comes to value your property, do they promise or do they guarantee to sell your property? Can they 100% guarantee that they're gonna sell your property? The answer is no. And the reason why I say that is because they can't guarantee that someone's gonna walk into their office or make an inquiry and say, I wanna buy that property. All they can do is put it out into the universe hoping that an investor or someone comes to buy that property. And the same goes with deal sourcing and a deal sourcer. You're not buying the property. All you're doing is simply putting yourself forward to the vendor and say, I can put this in front of property investors. Off the back of that, we'll aim to try and find a buyer. And then off the back of that, if the buyer comes forward, we'll aim to try and get a quick transaction because we're dealing with property investors, not Joe Blogs that may need to go off and get a first time buy a mortgage. And then off the back of that, we aim then to try and complete quickly. So uh, there's a couple of questions that are coming in. It says, so that, do you work off the floor plan only? So we do work off floor plans. We do work off current images as well. And we've got people that can potential um, we can speak to in the area as well. So I'll go through that with you in a second. So I'm going to talk to you just about this young gentleman. This guy is a guy called Tamor. Uh, he's based in Wolverhampton. And some of the deals that he's done, and he had no property experience. And I'm just going to tell you about some of the deals that he did. So he's based in Wolverhampton. He didn't visit any of these properties, and he did these all off desktop research. So first property that he sold was a HMO in Hull, fully tenanted, income producing, and it was sourced by an estate agent on right move. Took him two hours to source, uh, uh, analyze, call the agent and get exclusivity and package up. And he sold it to my database. And in essence, what we did is we charged a £4,000 fee to the investor. He goes, considering I never physically viewed the property in charge of £4,000 fee, is fantastic for a couple of hours work. Wouldn't you agree? Now, the second one was a rent-to-rent -rent deal, which is a five-bed HMO in Wolverhampton. He goes, using Arsh's technique, I went direct to vendor, proposed a solution, and managed to get a three-year rent-to-rent deal on it. And then he decided to keep that for himself. Third one was a rent-to-rent -rent service accommodation apartment, which is a two-bed apartment in Birmingham City Centre. So, again, he proposed a three-year service accommodation R to SA deal. Again, he decided to keep that for his portfolio. Deal number four, seven bed lease option in Stoke, which is fully tenanted, income producing, and this was sourced direct to owner. Never viewed all the pictures provided by the owner, and we sold the deal within one day to my investor database. And we charged a 5,000 fee, uh, 5, fee to the investor. <clears throat> Deal number five, it was the HMO. So the last deal was a seven bed HMO. This one was a six bed HMO, but next door. So once we'd completed deal number four, the owner then says, well, I've got one next door. Shall we do the same again? <clears throat> so we managed to get two deals at the same vendor. And again, we charged another five grand fee because she was really happy with how that deal went. And then finally, deal number six, uh, there was a five-bed HMO in Bridgewater, which is down towards Devon, fully tenanted, income-producing, source by an estate agent, took two hours to source and analyse, and we sold that within 14 days. So they don't all sell within one day. 
that's not realistic. But we do sell them and we try and get a quick conclusion for agents and vendors. Now, the reason why I told you about Termal there is because if you notice, there was lots of different strategies within the properties that he acquired. So if you look at, <clears throat> I always say there's no need to be a one trick pony. I want you to be able to look at every property and apply a strategy which works best for the owner and the purchaser. So try and see if you can negotiate a below market value deal, whether it's a full market value deal, going back to my example of the block of apartments that I acquired, if I can add value elsewhere, can it become a rent to rent? Can it become a lease option? Could it become an assisted sale like that house where I made £103,000 on? Could it be an exchange and a delayed completion? Could it be a planning gain? So there's so many different strategies and people automatically assume that sourcing is only one strategy. Sourcing has multiple strategies within the strategy. And if you understand all of them, you should be able to monetize every lead. Um, okay. <clears throat> so Ben says, so where do you find these properties and send them your way? And you make us money by, uh, so do we find properties and send them your way and you make us money by them buying off the vendor? No. Okay, so Ben, what happens is that you guys as the sourcer would potentially go off and find the deals. You can then bring them to me and we can then uh, put them onto my platform. We can sell them to my investor and then we can do a 50-50 split on the fee. So I always propose that as well. So are all the investors on the app pre-approved? So yes, they are. So let's keep moving forward. So just to give you a, a scope of some of the deals that we've done over the last week. And again, have a look. We've got a four bed HMO. We've got land with planned permission. Seven bed HMO. Block of flats. Another six bed HMO. We've got a two bed terraced house. HMO, commercial unit, HMO. So we get lots of HMOs. I don't mind saying that. And the reason why I say I don't mind saying that is because they are still flavor of the month. Lots of investors are still buying HMOs. Um, are still buying HMOs all over the country. And we sell an average around 10 a week. <clears throat> so let's keep moving on and we're going to talk about uh, the market because again with deal sourcing is no different to estate agency the market determines the prices that are offered on these properties if the price is high the seller gets more money if the prices are low the buyer gets a better bargain and it really is as simple as that you know estate agents have to change the prices of their stock as the seasons go through. So if we're going through a recession, prices will come down. If we're going through a boom, prices go up. And simply the trader adjusts the pricing according to the economic climate. Now, at certain times, I'm going to, I try and give you the good and the bad, and I try and give you a full overview of what's going on. Now, there's lots of uncertainty right now. Introduction, section 24. What's going to happen to property prices? We're seeing the UK adjusting to rising inflation and cost of living crisis. We're seeing an increase in interest rates. What's going to happen? How's the market going to react? You know, it was uh, last week that they said that the interest rate had increased to 1%. Now, lots of people started to panic at 1%, but you've got to remember that we were at much higher uh, interest rates than 1%. But we've got so used to having 0.2 or you know 0.1% interest rates that 1% seems like a massive jump. But the reality is that this will have an effect on the property market, and ultimately you, as a property sourcer, will be able to take advantage of that. Now, people are going to say, "Well, how do I find these opportunities?" Now, I'm going to put one thing out there. 
I don't, I don't proclaim to be, I don't proclaim to be a clever guy. I, I think myself as quite a simple person and I don't want to make something complicated. So I'm going to give you two scenarios now. You've got two scenarios. You can either go direct to vendor and let's say the Mr. Vendor has got one property that he's selling and you could spend a lot of money on trying to reach Mr. Vendor. Or you can start to create an alliance or allegiance with a group of estate agents within your location. The reason why I say that is because the estate agent, how many properties do they have on their books right now? And did you know that there's over 53,000 estate agents in the UK? And the average charge that they charge is around 1% plus VAT for a sale. <clears throat> now, the reason why I say that, I've just put that stat out there because there's 53,000 estate agents, but there's over 800,000 properties for sale throughout the UK. So I'm just going to leave that stat there for a second because. For me, it's about scalability. For me, it's about the ability to have a funnel full of deals month after month after month after month. So for me, my focus is not trying to find that vendor that has got one, own, one property. I'd rather build that relationship with the agent who can give me deal after deal after deal after deal. Now, I've just put up an example of an email that I received from an agent. And I've been working with this agent for over a 12. So this is the first email that he sent me back in January 2021. I'm still working with him today. We've done multiple deals all over the UK. And here he goes. He sent me an email. He goes, oh, so I've got two HMOs on our books. We can't sell. But I'm not sure why. Are they good investments? The vendor has indicated he wants 250,000. If they're both sold, if not, it'd have to be 260 more. And basically what he said to me, he goes, <clears throat> Ash, can you help me sell them? Now, just out of curiosity, why would an estate agent reach out to me and say, Ash, help me sell these properties? Let's think about this for a moment. Put it in the comment box. Why would an estate agent reach out and say, Osh, help me sell these properties? Really think about this. <clears throat> yes, so the first answer that came in, because he gets paid, when they sell, they're not expert at dealing with investors, only residentials. Yes, good answer. You've been helpful before. Yes, correct. Not the right type of property for them. Yes, correct. Due to good working relationship. Yes, correct. To gain contacts. Yes, correct. Your database. Yes, correct. Okay. <clears throat> More importantly, it's a win-win scenario for all parties involved. Because remember what I said about the dynamic. If I help sell their properties, it makes it easy work for them because they still make the same commission. Because remember, as a deal sorter, where do we make our money from? We make our money from the buyer. The estate agent still makes their money from the seller. So the agent's not losing any commission, but they're still generating a sale without having to do all the hard work. So here's how I've broken down on step by step. I help sell their properties and make it easy work for them. Number two, they still make money exactly the same commission. Number three, it gives them another avenue to market their properties. Number four, I make money from a property I simply control. Number five, it's a win-win all round. <clears throat> so can you see why estate agents are happy to work with you if you've got a database or you've got people that you can offer their properties to. 
it's not costing them anything and you're only going to benefit from any property that they offer you because it gives you more stock to appraise and offer to your database <clears throat> now one of the questions that came in so you can see why i like working with agents because it gives me you know if i was to go off and start doing direct of marketing letters um direct to vendor deals or direct to vendor marketing it means that i'd either have to start writing letters to houses with boards outside i'd have to start doing a leafleting camp campaign leafleting campaign i'd either have to start running an online digital uh, like a facebook advert marketing campaign and you know facebook marketing um or Facebook ads, should I call it, is still a very valid strategy. But just bear in mind that, again, it's a costly strategy. When it's say costly, you can't just do it for one month and stop. You have to be in it for a long term. You have to be prepared to run it for three, six, maybe even 12 months in order to get a good quality lead. But that means that you have to spend that money on running those adverts. How much is it going to cost me to work with an estate agent? It's not going to cost me anything. It's going to cost me a phone call to them initially, perhaps talk to them about some of their properties. Worst case scenario, absolute worst case scenario, is going to cost me a morning where I go over and have a coffee with them so that we can kind of understand how everything works. So direct to vendor uh, strategies are very much a case of as they always have been you can find them you can find the owners via land registry so you can find properties on the market and you can write letters to them by finding their details off land registry that's probably one of the still most used strategies you can use stuff like hmo registers you can use planning registers there's so many different methods you can do leaflets <laughs> I did a strategy once, and I don't mind saying this, but I targeted funeral directors because obviously what happens in funeral directors, people die. When people die, what do they leave behind? Um, they leave, sometimes they leave assets. So I did a massive marketing campaign and it worked really well. And it still does. <clears throat> One thing I will say to you is that, remember what I said, don't become a one-trick pony. No two transactions will ever be the same. So you can't just sit there thinking, well, I'm just gonna offer this one solution. and I'm gonna offer it to every single person that contacts me because that's not how it operates. <clears throat> no two deals will be the same. No two scenarios will be the same. So you need to look at every property and every scenario and apply a strategy which works best for the owner and the purchaser. So again, looking at, can you get it as a BMV deal? Can you create it as something like a strategic rent to rent lease option, assisted sale or planning game deal? And as you see at the bottom, I put the most strategic will be the most successful. And I'm very clear on that. And I've seen that hundreds of people that have been deal sourcing, the ones that really think outside the box are the ones that are the most successful deal sources that I know. So where do we find all these estate agents? Where do we find the 50, you know, the 800,000 properties that are on Rightmove, Zoopla, on the market? We've got Sparing, we've got OpenRent, we've got Gumtree, we've got eBay, we've got so many different platforms. These are all free platforms for you to use. But more importantly, what's even better is that these all provide you with so much information that you don't physically need to leave your home to appraise the property. Worst case scenario, you need to make a phone call. And I'm very clear on that. Very clear on that, that you don't need to physically visit a property. And that's why I like deal sourcing, because today I could be viewing... I could be appraising a property in Grimsby. Tomorrow, I could be appraising a property in Bournemouth. Day after that, I could be back appraising a property in Liverpool, then Manchester, then Wolverhampton, wherever it may be. But that's just by creating a network of people that feed me deals daily. 
<clears throat> Sorry, really struggling today. So let's keep moving on. So can ordinary people succeed? When I say that, and I say that in the nicest possible way. So there's a young gentleman called Craig. Now Craig was following me for some time on YouTube and Facebook, and he called me to have a one hour consultation to see if we could put, point him in the direction where he was going wrong in his property journey. Uh, we had a good chat, and he told me where, where he was doing well and what he could do better. And he goes that he realized that he'd missed lots of opportunities on opportun uh, lots of opportunities uh, on properties because he was treating it as almost like a one trick pony. More, a long story short is that he decided to come on a full day's training in my office. And off the back of that, he started to find deals with vendors and agents. <clears throat> so in the I challenged Craig at the start of I think it's the end of 2021 and the start of 2022. See how many deals he could do within a short space of time. And he managed to do eight deals within one month. So this is Craig Webb and this is his journey. So these are his properties that he actually sourced. And these are all the ones that we sold. So look at this one here. So we've got property workshop, Nottinghamshire, or towards Nottinghamshire, shall we say? Luton, Hull, Warsaw in the Midlands, Burnley up north, Boston. <coughs> and if you have a look at them, they're a real mix of below market value deals, full market value deals, rent to rent deals, lease option deals. And some of them were a mix of direct to vendor, deals from other agents, and also co-sourcing with other sources. So off the back of that, Craig has done extremely well and he goes on to even more success. And he's done a number of deals in 2022. And he's now become a full-time sourcer. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about a program called the Elite Property Tribe. And I'm going to show you just a couple of things about the Elite Property Tribe, but more importantly, um, I'm going to be showing you a program where I want to work with you but also, as part of that, I'm also wanting to provide you with the leads to make your life easier. So not only am I prepared to train you, but I'm also going to give you the leads. So in essence, you're doing very little work. I just need people that have got time and energy and want to become a deal sourcing machine within a very short space of time. So. You want to see more case studies and more properties that we've sourced? We've got over 200 properties all on the Property Investor app. So you can either go to propertyinvestorapp.co.uk or you can go to the App Store, type in Property Investor and download the app from there. So the program that I created now, this is going into its sixth year, I believe. It's a program called the Elite Property Tribe. And what the Elite Property Tribe is, is a program which has allowed me to turn property investors into more of an all-rounded property investor and understand every strategy so that you're not that one trick pony so learn how to source six cash flow strategies such as deal trading rent to rent lease options hmo service accommodation and commercial to residential so i'm just going to show you here some of the modules that we've got in our training I appreciate we're going quite quickly. There's 52 modules covering every different style of strategy, but more importantly, you get all the documentation 
you get all the contracts, you get all the support and all the network. And I'm going to be talking to you about a system where I'm now all right. So the Elite Property Tribe is a program which starts the first week of June, but we are taking people in instantly. There's 52 modules of online training. We have live fortnightly deal clinics and problem solving webinars with me. Uh, believe me, I sound better than this normally. Uh, we have shadowing days in the office with me all throughout the year. So when we talk about shadowing day, I allow people to come in, into my office so you can sit opposite me. I can listen to your phone calls. I can hear what you're saying to agents. I can hear what you're saying to vendors. And we can fine tune that. Uh, we can fine tune that so that we can turn some of the no's into yeses. As well as that, if you've got a deal and you can't wait to jump on another webinar in a fortnight's time, we have a daily 10 minute call booking system where you can book a call with me. We've got 10 minutes. And in that 10 minutes, I want you to tell me everything about that property. And then I can appraise it and say yes or no, whether it's a deal or not. We also have four live meetups throughout the year. We get access, you've got access to not only the 52 modules, but also 400 hours worth of previous webinars and recordings and live meets. But as part of the EPT, you also get to sell your deals to my investor database. And that's where we do a 50 50 split on the fees. You get access to all of my uh, to my useful contacts. We've got an EPT WhatsApp group. We don't really have so much a Facebook group because everyone, <coughs> everyone prefers to keep the uh, WhatsApp group. Plus, you got access to all the contracts, templates, and spreadsheets. We're going to start the EPT, and we did this uh, earlier this year, and it was phenomenal with a seven-day property challenge. And uh, what that looks like. It's that it starts on, I think, Monday the 6th of June, if my, if my dates are correct. Yeah, Monday the 6th of June. And it finishes on Friday the 10th of June. And how that works is that on Monday the 6th, we have live webinar training. So we we'll go through some of the strategies. Tuesday, webinar training strategies. Wednesday, webinar training strategies. Different strategies. So what these are is almost like a quick start into all the strategies so that you can start to get your head around them so that when you start to look at properties, you can think, oh, OK, it doesn't fit that strategy, but it does fit this strategy. And therefore, we can monetize this lead. And I want you to start thinking more strategically about the deals that you're looking at and how they will be beneficial to you in a different light. And then on Friday. I get everyone into Wolverhampton. Wolverhampton is the centre of the earth. Uh, so Friday we have a live event, and that's called a day on the phones. Now, what a day on the phones is is that if you've ever seen a program called like Wolf on the uh, a film called Wolf on the Wall Street, I want you in a room, and I <laughs> I want every single one of you on the phones calling agents, calling vendors appraising deals, looking at hotspots and looking at supply and demand. More importantly, getting deals done. And that is happening on Friday, the 10th of June, 2022, at a hotel venue in Wolverhampton. And that's only available to EPT members. As well as that, new for June 2022, I'm going to be providing all the EPT members with live leads of deals to prepare and get ready to sell. So here, what I'm actually saying to you is that you don't even have to find your own leads. I'm going to be, I'm going to be providing you with the leads. It simply requires you to make a call and find out some key info. And my team will then package the deal and sell it to my investors. And new leads will be released weekly all over the UK. What it needs is your focus and attention so that when I provide you with the leads, you call it, you appraise it. And that's why it's really important that you understand the strategies so you can say, does it work for this? Does it not work for this? But either way, I'll be by your side so that if you're not sure, you book that 10 minute call and we go through it. So again, just a quick recap. <clears throat> 52 modules of online training. 
fortnightly field clinics, shadowing days in the office with me, daily 10 minute calls, four live virtual meets, the first one being the Friday the 10th of June, uh, access to 400 plus recordings of previous webinars. You get to JV and sell your deals to me, access to all my contacts and the EPT WhatsApp group. Now, here's my little promise to you. I will always be by your side. I'm not one of these people that say, okay, join, and then you can't get hold of me. You'll have my personal mobile number. So we've got fortnightly live webinars, Monday evenings between seven and nine. We help with negotiations and solve problems. So if you're struggling to negotiate with a vendor, I'm happy to jump on a call with you. We've got a private WhatsApp group. We've got an EPT learning journal. We've got an EPT platform with over 400 hours of recordings. And again, we have the quarterly EPT live meets. So if you want more information, you can click. I'll tell you what I will do here is, let me just quickly do this because this will be a little bit easier for you. If I just copy this uh, and I put it into the chat for everyone. Let me just do that. So you've got that there. And if I quickly go back here, So I've created a mini journal uh, and a mini journal on what this does, it gets you to write down your intentions and goals, but more importantly, your weekly accountability journal. Now I want you to write in there weekly what you've been doing, who have you been speaking to, what have the conversation's been like. So I can look at that journal and say, well, well, here's what you did well, here's what you need to do and move forward from there. More importantly, I've created a community, which I think is quite a positive community where well, you can surround yourself with people who have dreams, desires, and ambition. They'll help you push for and realize your own. So when we release the leads every week, we also then have calls at quarter past 10 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the only 10 to 15 minute Zoom calls. And in there, you've got questions about whether the leads or whether you've spoke to anyone or whether the agents had any issues, etc. And this is your time really just to ask any initial basic questions with me, one of my colleague Alex, and it works really well. The guys that we've been testing it with in the current EPT uh, have found it really valuable and they're really enjoying the sessions. Now, I could talk to you all night about people in the tribe, but we've got Ashley Walker, Ashley started in the EPT, started off sourcing, has now built up quite a substantial portfolio, all from the sourcing strategy. Bam, started. Um, he goes, webinars contain many golden nuggets that you can only learn from doing deals day in, day out. Uh, he goes, they really love the WhatsApp group and he's really enjoyed being in the EPT. We've got Lenka. <clears throat> I joined the EPT in June 2020, uh, 2020 and found the experience very exciting. Uh, she goes, I'm a patient mentor. I think that's the first time anyone's ever called me patient, by the way. Uh, but he goes, the fact that the EPT training comes with a WhatsApp support group, that I can access it when I need advice is just incredible. And then Ale, he goes, this is what I, the one that I really like, if I'm honest. He goes, I joined the uh, EPT in Feb. I grew my business of HMO rent to rent from seven properties, 37 rooms, 17 properties, 94 rooms with 100% occupancy. So remember what I said, just because you're sourcing doesn't mean you have to source properties to sell. You can source properties for your own purpose. <coughs> and Ale did that. He sourced properties for his own purpose. And he built himself quite a large rent to rent portfolio. When we've got Amanda Merrington, he sourced properties. And then we've got Adam. Adam's probably been one of the most successful uh, EPT members. He sourced over 50 odd properties and still continues. He's built a portfolio with none of his own money. And I, I taught him how to do that. <clears throat> so here's what it costs. So the full cost of the Elite Property Tribe. Is actually the full cost is six thousand pounds. However, you never pay six thousand pounds 
to start with. You pay 50% of that, which is 3,000. Then the only, the remainder 3,000 is only paid once you have done deals. And the reason why I say that is because that's my commitment to you to show that how, um, how certain I am that you're going to succeed. So you have the option of either paying in one payment or you have the option of paying over 12 months at £350 if you can't pay from the outset. So you've got the links <coughs> in the chat box, whether you want more information, oh, sorry, whether you want more information on the EPT, whether you want to join with one payment, or whether you want to join with 12 monthly payments. And there's the links. So before we go any further, I think now's a good time to answer any questions. So, uh, who's got a question about what we've discussed this evening? So, Dave says, do you have a maximum sell price or optimum selling price range? Um, I think stuff that sells quite quickly, stuff within the region of around 250 to 300,000 pounds, but then that is all dependent on location as well. Uh, because obviously, if you're based in a place like London, £300,000 may get you a shed, but it is all very much uh, dependent on the location as well and the deal. So Ben says, if you've got a deal, can we send it in? We're more than happy to have a look at your deals, but obviously we won't appraise stuff, Ben, if you're not part of the EPT. Uh, <coughs> so Trevor says, uh, here's a potential deal below market value, right move, 375,000, a bungalow and a large garden surrounded by similar properties. Search Gloucester within three miles with suitable planning. The, the bungalow could be developed and possible another built. Potentially, um, and that is, there's lots of things that you need to take into consideration there. So has someone already tried to do that? Have you looked at the planning to see, has someone tried to do that? Has it already been refused? Uh, have you checked to see how much properties would be in that location? What would build, the build cost be? So lots of things that you've got to take into consideration there. So Graham says, so the EPT done by virtual and internet or in person, or do you need to have any credentials to join? So Graham, no, it is done virtually. We do meet up online every fortnight on a Monday. And then our first live meetup, so live in-person meetup is on the Friday, the 10th of June. And that's going to be at a hotel venue in Wolverhampton. We normally book the Novotel hotel in Wolverhampton we just wait on confirmation from them and also when we know confirmation of numbers as well <clears throat> so does the investors stay as yours even after say buying a deal from me the sourcer so does the investors stay as yours yes they do so you will never get to meet our investors. Likewise, we will never get to meet your agent. So how I've devised this system is that I don't want to get to know, I don't need to know who your seller is. And equally, you don't need to know who my buyer is. Does that make sense? So any, any other questions? Is it for 12 months or uh, only for the month of June? So now, Lionel, this is a whole twelve-month program. You can watch all the you can watch all the modules. So if you pay in one go, <coughs> excuse me. If you pay in one go, you get access to all fifty-two modules. So you could watch them all within the space of a couple of weeks, and there's nothing stopping you from doing that. Um, how fast you interpret that information is completely up to you. And obviously, the quicker you take it in, the better you will become, the more equipped you'll become. Uh, and then and then you can go from there. 
So, uh, hopefully that helps. Right, so any other questions here? So, Saju says, what if you have no experience and want to get into property and don't have uh, much money? Okay. So, <clears throat> Saji's raised a good question, goes that if I pay one lump sum, it's 3,000, but if you're paying monthly installments of 350, it equates to 4,200. And I agree, because with the monthly installments, we get charged 12 lots of credit card transactions, which means that there's a lot more admin and there's a lot more transactional costs that go with that. So, unfortunately, it is more money if you pay monthly. Um, so, unfortunately, Sarchi, yeah, I, I appreciate that. That's that. Unfortunately, that's the only way that we can uh, absorb the admin costs on all the credit card transactions over 12. So, uh, any questions? Any other questions? I can't believe that I think I've got through all the questions. Right. What I will do is that I'll put my contact number up on the screen now. Huh. If anyone's got any questions and they want to call me when I'm not coughing down the screen at them, and first of all, I've got to apologize for coughing. I thought I would have been much better by now, but it's just taken me a little bit longer to recover than I anticipated. But if you'd like to have a, give me a call at the office, more than happy uh, to have a chat um, and explain what, what else we need to do to get you on board. Sarju says, so in terms of experience, can you still do this? Absolutely, Sarju. Don't panic about that. You don't need experience to do this. I want, if I'm honest, I like it and I prefer it if you've got no experience because that means that I don't have to untrain your bad, any bad habits that you may picked up along the way. I'd rather be able to work with you if you had a, if you like, almost like a blank, a blank canvas. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so Lionel, it says, can we make payment? Uh, can we call to make payment for the end of the month? Lionel, if you'd like to do that, please make note of the phone number and call us when you're ready to join. So there we have it, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed that session. I'll be honest, I've struggled through it. I've genuinely struggled through it, but I wasn't going to let you guys down um, because I, I did um, postpone this already once. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the session. Hopefully I kind of came across and got the information over to you. Um, and then any problems... So Saj says, strategies like the service accommodation, planning permission change use will be taught from scratch. Absolutely. So they're all in there. So service accommodation has got its own module, planning permission, planning portals have all got their change use, have all got their own modules in there. So yes, they have. <coughs> Baruch says, any London venue in the near future? Yes, we could do a London venue, to be fair. I haven't done a London <coughs> I've been doing a London venue in a long time, so that could be something that we could look at. So, uh, so Graham says, tell you what, <coughs> if you want to give me a call tomorrow, Graham, and we can go through that with you, if that's okay. So there we have it, guys. Hopefully you've had a great evening. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And any questions, please feel free to ask or just drop me a quick email and then we'll go from there. Take care guys, good night, God bless.